Thank you for joining us for another episode of Exposing Scientology, where we reveal what really goes on inside this business masquerading as a church. Hello, everyone. Here Hello. we are. Hello, Hello. Lily. Hi, Mikey. There, I put it on that because oh, good. Okay. we have been instructed that this is the better format for us. Oh, okay. Use. Okay. Uh, I, I have no idea. Like, Sick. like I said, like I say on my on my YouTube videos all the time, I'm the dinosaur around here. I don't have a clue. What I just sort of struggle my way through. Anyway, so, it's so nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mikey. You look, you look good. You look well. Uh, I know it's been a rough few weeks for you, so I'm yes. I'm really happy that you're back to battery almost. Yes, almost. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> Thank you. I know, I know. I it's it's terrible. It's terrible when when a friend is so far away and they're going yeah. through stuff and there's absolutely yeah. nothing you can do other than say, Hi, how are you? Yeah, how I know, you? but you're you've been amazing. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. Yes. Okay. Well, the subject of today's discussion is, oh, by the way, Leah, I don't even know if you realize it yet, but uh, we, Christy managed to figure out how to get these YouTube videos into podcast format so that people can listen to them in their car. Oh. Or the, and there's five of them that have now been uploaded and she's working on all of them and then we'll do them concurrently. And that little intro and you know the thumbnails and stuff as yeah. we when we do them together i'll change it so that it shows us not awesome. just me so well you know there's we haven't even really announced it and there's already been thousands of downloads of the podcast oh, which amazing. is all the all the things that we did on youtube previously oh okay. good People were asking, can we get this in podcast format? Yeah. And this was one of my dinosaur questions because I asked everybody on Mark and Claire. I'm like, why do people, why can't people just listen to it on YouTube? They don't have to look yeah. at the pictures. Oh, okay. Well, I got my education as to the difference between a podcast and a YouTube. On a podcast, you can basically close your phone and just listen. Right. You don't have to have your phone open so that you the screen gets touched right. and the thing pauses and etc anyway okay so i got it so Good for we you. will we you will explain yeah. it to me one day yeah. <laughs> the well, bit. yeah a little bit better yeah yeah i i will but okay. we're we're um sort of taking baby steps moving forward and mm -hmm. um getting ourselves onto the internets, interwebs, and in all the appropriate places. So that's good. Good. The subject of the, this particular discussion is something that I, I forget how I got it, but someone sent an article to me mm -hmm. from Psychology Today. Mm -hmm. And the article is, in, uh, is about emotional terrorism. And it sort of caught my eye, and I read the article. It's not very long. Uh, and I went, oh, my God, this is the perfect description of what Scientology is engaged in, emotional mm -hmm. terrorism. And um, it, this is just a – you don't have – nobody has to try and read this. I'm just going to put this up here. Dealing with Emotional Terrorists and Mental Abusers by Dr. Burton Goldsmith. And we he he gives these four points that are like hallmarks of emotional terrorism. And I wanted to go through them with you, Leah, so that we could talk about how this is, you know, played out in the Scientology world because yeah. it's pretty dramatic. Um, and I wanted to define something because I've written some things about this on my blog before. And also Stephanie Hutchison did a terrific article about this on her blog. Um, I'll link to those uh, below and I'll have them on my blog. But okay. the, the 
the definition of terrorism is, according to Merriam-Webster, the systematic use of terror, especially as a means of coercion. And terror is defined as a state of intense or overwhelming fear. Mm -hmm. And we have talked often about how, you know, the chronic tone, so to speak, of Scientologists is fear. They, mm -hmm. they are in fear of not living up to what is required of them. They're in fear of consequences. They're in fear of people writing reports about them. They're in fear of being declared. They're in fear of, like, it's a, it's a life that is really got a lot of fear associated with it when you're a Scientologist, and it gets even worse when you're a Sea Org member. Completely. And if I might add, um, the way the way in, right, in, in Scientology is that every man, woman, and child's life depends on what you do here and now in Scientology, which is uh, from a basic staple uh, policy that everybody has to read in Scientology over and over again in their Scientology career. And it, 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 it's very similar uh, to, to, you know, what the Jehovah's Witnesses sell, right? That there's going to be this kind of Armageddon yes. and, and working on that fear, right? And, um, and it's very similar with Scientology, although it's different. What's different in Scientology is well, a lot. First of all, you have to prepay for everything, and it's a commitment of every day, two and a half hours a day. And I think I do think that is another similarity to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, uh, but what that that is kind of the thing that gets people in, right? Is that you know the planet and mankind's survival uh, depends on your involvement in Scientology. Not only your involvement, but your absolute dedication. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. and before the planet and mankind, it's yeah. your, you, your eternity is at stake. Hubbard says yeah. this over and over and over. Yeah. You, uh, do you want to be a, you know, a black cinder floating in space for all eternity? Or right. do you want to have the glory of being a happy, uh, free individual who is has got enormous power and capabilities brought to you courtesy of Scientology? And that you're you're right, Leah. Fear of the the terrible future that will be your future if you yeah. don't engage yourself in Scientology, and then subsequently the future of every man, woman, and child on Earth if you don't engage yourself in Scientology. And and also and yeah sorry mike go ahead i want to let you finish no no that's all right i was just gonna say yeah. that's a huge motivating factor in scientology right. and on a smaller level right because you don't oh you don't get to read keeping scientology working until you're on a major service in scientology in scientology and you know they dangle those carrots right the introductory introductory courses um that are designed uh, for anybody, right? Like anybody would agree with, you know, uh, communicating better with your, your loved one or your business associates. And right. So it starts out on that smaller scale, right? But yep. like your own personal survival, right? Don't you want to be a better wife, a better daughter, a better actress, a better actor, whatever it is. Right. And so it starts pushing those buttons right yes with the personality test and your lack of accord meaning you're not in harmony with the world and you know you could be happier you could be a cause of your own life and uh, then the then it starts right then it starts like you can't survive without this tool and scientology is the only uh you know place that has the technology to unlock uh, your innate abilities. And yes. so it starts there, the dependency um, and the conditioning of coming in every day as a form of control, right? Because 
there's no other place calling itself a church that requires that you you sign up for a course, you give a schedule, you have to, you know, grown people have to show up to muster. You're in a school <laughs> setting with a supervisor behind you. You're not allowed to go past words you don't understand, right? And so this is kind of, it, it, it again, uh, there's a word for this in psychology and sociology where they test a little bit and see how much control they can have on you. And then they can then they push it, push it, and push it more. So ultimately, by the end of your career in Scientology, you have no way to operate in your life without them. Exactly. Yeah. Leah, your your studies are definitely showing. Yay. <laughs> because it's no, hard seriously. Work. This seriously. hard work. It's hard work, this school. By the way, did you see what I emailed you yesterday from Shannon's yeah. school? Yes. Is that crazy? It is crazy. Now, so what we're talking about is most people who haven't gone to college or, you know, have an education, which most of us don't in Scientology, right? Because, again, very similar to Jehovah's Witnesses where, you know, an education is not, uh, you know, valid. Important. It's, not, it's not important and it's not uh, rewarded. Um because they want you in a Scientology organization most of your day and night, right? And so, right. Go with it. so what school does is it educates you, right? And But because most of us didn't have it, and I say most of us, I'm not saying all of us, but most of us did not have an education. Um, L. Ron Hubbard calls himself a scientist, um, um, a Purple Heart recipient. Like he makes a, a, a very egregious claims about himself in Dianetics um, and and beyond, right? And if you're not in the real world educated, right, you accept mm -hmm. that, accept that as truth mm -hmm. and accept that this man came up with this technology, right? Like, you know, the e-meter and, you know, most of us believe that the e-meter worked because we saw it with our own eyes, but there's a science behind why it's working and it has nothing to do with what Scientology teaches. Right. Um, because it's suggestive, it's coercive, it's it's a lot of things. And it, and also it has to do with the cells of the body and it has nothing to do with what Scientology teaches. But uh, in Shannon, my sister's school, she came down, as I showed me in her book, that there is a word called engrams. <laughs> and uh, L. Ron Hubbard did not come up with this, right? But it's just, again, those things that, you know, ha after so many years, you start to... You're still trying to dissect what this is, and you read this real piece of information, right? Psychology based, and now it's resonating with you. And now right. we're going to hopefully give that to other people so they can maybe understand how we got sucked into it, what this is. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. And and the and the level of control that it mm -hmm. has on mm -hmm. people once mm -hmm. they're in there and why it's so hard for people to walk away or escape or get out, even mm -hmm. when they have friends and relatives trying yeah. to persuade them that that's the, what they should do. Sure. Okay. So let, let's go. Let point one in his yeah. four points, it, he titles manipulation. Mm -hmm. And he says, emotional abuse is about manipulation. The abuser feels empowered by his or her, her actions. This behavior is usually a learned one. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> he, he talks about learned, you know, this may have come from someone's parents, you yeah. know, that, that's a common thing. Uh, actually, the learned behavior in Scientology of manipulating people comes from L. Ron Hubbard. Mm -hmm. L. Ron Hubbard trains Scientologists and particularly Sea Org members how to manipulate people and right. puts them in a framework mm -hmm. where they are guaranteed to be manipulated by right. the rules and regulations of the organization, by you yeah. have to keep statistics, you have to show up at this time, you have to be here at that time. And it is a, it is a, an 
extraordinarily regimented mm -hmm. world that Scientologists right. live in. They talk and, about and, and again, Mike, that is part of manipulation, right? <clears throat> because uh, people like to have a place to go. People like to have a schedule. People like to know what what the day is. And like we're talking about in the first point, right? Is that Scientology structures your life for you before you even know it. Yep. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah and there's a purpose. It, and the biggest part is the purpose, right? Is your living your life now for for quote unquote a purpose yes and the betterment of is, mankind yourself and your family and none of those things are true <laughs> right but and in order to accomplish that you have to do what's good for scientology mm -hmm. and this um manipulation of people and taking their I mean, one of the things that Scientology does very effectively is takes take people's uh, best nature. I don't know mm -hmm. how else to describe it. Their their yeah, ideas want that to they do want good, to help. Like, yeah, they want, want to, to do, do good. good. They themselves. want to help people. Yes, yes. Want, they want to be um, uh, a benefit to the world and to mm -hmm. society and to their friends and their family. And Scientology tells them. This is, we have the way that you can accomplish that. And yeah. it is the, the trap, mm -hmm. the bait, the um, thing that gets the vast majority of people who are not born into Scientology, yeah. but the vast majority of people to come in. Yeah. It is not the idea that every person who comes into Scientology is a, a like, a broken person looking for a lifeline. Right. This is some idea that people have that everybody that gets into a cult had to get in there because they were inherent. There was something inherently very wrong with them, yeah. and the cult offered them a solution to their problem. Now right. that does happen with some people. They get in because they're on drugs, and right. somehow they get helped with that. But yeah. The truth is the vast majority of people that get into Scientology come in because they are promised that they will be given effective tools in the here and now that yeah. will allow them to help themselves, themselves and right. help others. Yeah. When the actual truth is, is the opposite. You're becoming more and more dependent on Scientology, Scientologists, and the words of L. Ron Hubbard to a point where, you know, our parents stopped parenting once they were Scientologists because they couldn't think for themselves anymore, which is funny that Scientology sells that idea, right? Think for yourself. And we're outside the confines of, you know, real religions, right? We are free thinkers and, you know, like, and nothing is true of the, like, there's no semblance of yourself thinking for yourself once you are completely indoctrinated, which, which happens pretty quickly. Like we're talking about, it's the little pieces of control. And once you, that becomes a norm, yes, right. That becomes the norm for us. So I go to Scientology every day for two and a half hours a day minimum. And I must sit and you know, do a, you know, I have to be there for muster and I have to say here and I have to go on a break when they tell me I have to look up every word I don't understand. I have a person supervising me learning this religion and it's the worst kind of brainwashing that uh, we were told it is because you have to, you're basically self brainwashing by studying right. Scientology in the way that they demand and you completely lose yourself. Like I said, our parents start to say, look, what does L. Ron Hubbard say about this? Yeah. You know, what? go yeah. to the church and have them deal with your marriage and your relationships and go to see the ethics officer and an ethics officer is in charge of your life now as an adult civilian Scientologist who's paying. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the Scientology catchphrase is what would Ron do? Right. Do what right. Ron does. 
do right. what Ron did, do what yeah. Ron says. Right. And that, uh, I mean, I don't think that there is, um, you, you could come up with a system that is more manipulative mm -hmm. than Scientology. Yeah. It, it is, it is sort of honed in on all of the elements of that that are most effective and workable at at manipulating people into mm -hmm. believing and doing things that are not in their best interest right and and you don't know that until you're 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 you know 20 30 years in right yeah right yeah okay so point 2 public degradation mm. oh, again Scientology and, and particularly in the Sea Org yeah. are the masters of public de degradation. It says one of the most humiliating experiences is to be degraded in public. If it becomes a pattern, something at this person's core is wrong and it'll make your life with him or her very uncomfortable. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Sea Org first because th sure. this is, this is, um, Sea Org 101, particularly in the the years of the reign of David Miscavige, public degradation has become a an art form in the Sea Org. Mm -hmm. People are stood up in front of everybody that they work with, their their peers, their juniors, their seniors, and humiliated. Uh, publicly with statements about what they may or may not have done that supposedly come from their confessions. Mm -hmm. And this has become a, a routine thing in the Sea Org. This is not something that you find so often with, with public people, uh, public Scientologists or regular parishioners. Mm -hmm. um, although it does happen uh, there is other ways that this public degradation occurs with them. Yeah, yeah. But in the Sea Org, it is absolutely the case that one of the things that is used to terrorize people is the threat that they will be hauled out in front of everybody that they work with and humiliated in front of them. Right. And it happens all the time mm -hmm. and it it is a uh you know mark and claire and i have told a ton of of incidents of where this has happened and how outrageously gross it is and by the way um, for people like me who were like a civilian right who was a civilian scientologist you know we had the idea that people like you senior executives in david miscavige's you know organization at the top we're living this pristine, you know, exemplary life, right? <laughs> um, and so when you told me these stories, and th this is covered in Going Clear as well, you know, hearing about, you know, you, Debbie Cook, Amy Scobie, uh, you, you, like you said, Mark and Claire, you know, hearing that as, as a civilian Scientologist when I left from you, was shocking. And I know you remember these moments where you would tell me these things. I know. And I was like, what? I kept, what the fuck policy? What? You're like, policy? We don't follow policy. I'm like, this is all we're taught is to follow. What? Because everything has to follow a policy is what you're taught, right? You're not allowed to do this because I'll reach that. You have to do this because I'll reach that. To find out that this is what's going on at the upper, like the cream of the uh, of our executives running our church, running us, right, and our lives is shock was shocking. Mike, I still, you know, I still ha have problems with it. It's still hard for me to because you know we, we don't get to see that, right? We're not privy to you know, the Sea Org members' lives, personal lives, even each other's lives as Scientologists. Right. We're not allowed to talk about what's happening with us, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I just wanted to say that because it's still like hearing it is like... I, 
I know, Leah, you yeah. pick that up so often. And it, yeah, it, but it it is because it's so incredible. Like it's like so uh and, and also because you realize you've been lied to. You I, realize I know. I'm giving up sins about, you know, humping a teddy bear, you know, when I was five or whatever the hell I was doing, you know what I mean? Or, you know, smoking a cigarette. And you guys are beating the shit out of each other. And David Miscavige is telling your transgressions from your conf like from your confessionals to other staff members. It's like so off poly. It's like insane. Right. It, and it, right. it, to, to realize like, so it's all a front. It's all a lie. We don't yep. follow policies. And by the way, a lot of it is following policy. You find out later too. Right. <laughs> Oh, I know, because yeah. there's, you know, there is a bunch of things that are written by Hubbard about how, you know, you've got to make the, the, it too gruesome to confront. Right. To, you know, all yeah. of that sort of stuff is used yeah. to justify many, many things. Yeah. But when you get to the public Scientology, the parishioners mm -hmm. level, there, this degradation still exists of and course. it happens routinely with um even even down to the the silly not silly but the examples of you're talking about you have to show up for roll call in the mm -hmm. classroom and if you don't show up or you're yes, late or something they they come in and grab you and yes. frog march you out of the classroom to go see the ethics officer and everybody yeah. knows what's happening not everybody to knows you, Mike. you're right and it's like they'll tap you on the shoulder and the supervisor, if you yawn, you know, during reading, uh, you know, Scientology and you're asked, you're, you know, brought to a different room and everybody knows what's happening and you're being checked out like in front of people. What's the definition of an, what's the definition of the, what's the definition of antagonistic, what's the definition of this, what's the definition, you know, and you're being grilled. Like this is an everyday experience of a Scientologist. This is how you're raised. Like this starts very early age, not to mention Mike, you know, at the age of five, children are put into interrogations and asked explicit, uh, you know, sexual, uh, in, you know, they're asked questions and again, they're suggested to that they had lived other lives and they're coerced into giving up transgressions that they don't have to make up scenarios, uh, that they've killed or raped or did something, you know, did something really horrible in another lifetime. That's all written down in their folder and all of that stuff in their folder is many people are reading, many people know, uh, they talk amongst each other, you get in trouble, you know, you you have to do uh, amends and you have to walk around the organization as a civilian and get signatures from people and say what you've done wrong and who your friends are. And they put up the clairs in public areas, letting everybody know what you've done or you're on an uh, a gag order, a Scientology gag order. You're not allowed to upset anybody. I mean, this is for public people, paying customers. Right. So it, it's endless, Mike, the, the, right. the, humili the humiliation for even a civilian Scientologist. Uh, but they don't realize it. You don't realize it. Exactly. Yes. And I mm -hmm. was going to make a point about that, Leah, is, you know, it, it may sound very petty and mm -hmm. insignificant to people that, um, you know, as a Scientologist, you're you're pulled out of the course room because you mm -hmm. yawned. Right. And taken somewhere else, and people are then start asking you the definition of words. Right. But to a Scientologist and mm -hmm. in the Scientology world, that is evidence that you are not being a good Scientologist. Correct. And it is it is public degradation and humiliation. Of course. And I know it sounds like it's nothing, but it, it's a when, lot. Yeah. It's a lot. If you're raised this way from the age of five. <laughs> And, you know, and people wonder a lot of times, like, why do we react the way we do, you know, exes, right? In the real world, it's like, because this is what we've experienced our whole life. So if somebody goes, hey, why are you wearing that? It's like, why? 
why are you asking? Why am I, you know, it's like, no, it's just because I wondered if you were cold, you know, it's going to rain, you know what I mean? They mean nothing by it, right? But we're so used to being ridiculed. Why do you look that way? You know, are you wearing perfume, Leah? You're not supposed to be wearing perfume. And then, all right, what's your, how much did you give, donate? Did you, you know, how come you weren't on stage? How come you weren't? Because, you know, only the $2 million people were on stage. So maybe you should give the other million. And so it, it, it goes on and on and on. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, the other place that this is very, very prevalent is in the fundraising part mm -hmm. of Scientology, which yeah. is like a big part. Yeah. And where you are, you are humiliated and degraded for your inability to give all the money that is being demanded of you. Yeah. Because that indicates that you're not really being a good Scientologist because if you were you would be doing well in life you would be and making fact, more money and you, the yeah. fact that you that you don't have all of the money that they demand from you mm -hmm. is indicative and and it's somewhat subtle and sometimes it's not but yeah. it is always somehow your fault right when you, you're like well isn't Scientology supposed to make me more able why am i taking out another loan <laughs> exactly why is not exactly. Scientology able enough to make their own money and pay for their own buildings yep yeah okay point three withholding mm -hmm. affection mm, sometimes people one. punish the ones they say they love by withholding affection that is a big it, one that is a huge one in Scientology. Mm -hmm. yeah. This, this is the the sort of nexus of disconnection. Mm -hmm. But it is also, if you haven't experienced the the way that Scientology expects you to treat someone, who even if it's your spouse who is in trouble with the organization. Or your child. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, your mm -hmm. child, your mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. whoever, anybody, mm -hmm. anybody that is near and dear to you, if they are in trouble with the organization, whether they have been fully declared or not, mm -hmm. you are expected to treat them like they are useless, worthless, mm -hmm. um, in the words of Scientology, degraded beings, mm -hmm. bums, hopeless, mm -hmm. until Scientology has deemed them to once again be acceptable. Mm -hmm. And this is throughout the entirety of Scientology. This is not just limited to the Sea Org or to, you know, staff members. This is all Scientologists are expected to, and if they don't, they get pulled in for obedience handling in the ethics department. And they get interrogated at their expense. And what is wrong with you? Why have you not disconnected from your daughter? You know, I, we see you're still following your own daughter on Facebook. I mean, it's insanity. Now, even going earlier than that, as soon as your parents become Scientologists, your affection, their love is conditional. Um, and you learn that very early on that they choose mostly the organization and they'll run Hubbard over you. And they pretty much figure like, I'll just see you next lifetime. Like you're not really my kid anyway. <laughs> you're just my kid this lifetime and you're not a body. You're a spiritual being that's lived many lives and will live many other. That's why people are, you know, I always reiterate that because that's, that's what makes disconnection so easy for Scientologists because they believe that from a very early on, from getting in right. to the organization pretty early on. And you learn, I know, I know for me and for my sister Nicole, especially because my sister was, uh, you know, Christian, right. And she was always kind of veering toward, like she'd have a cross in her apartment and my mother would scoff at that, you know, when she saw that. Like that's not the right cross. Like Scientology has a cross that means anything. It doesn't. Um, but my sister was treated like she wasn't really part of the family because right. she wasn't on course, didn't really want to be in Scientology like I was and my little sister was who had no ch real choice. But 
um, so you learn pretty early on. If you're not there every day at Scientology, you're shit to your family. You are right. shit to your Scientology family. Right. Yeah. It, I'm. I mean, it. It's to the point of in the Sea Org. If someone is routinely in trouble mm -hmm. for whatever their position is in the CO, yeah. it often occurs that their spouse mm -hmm. gets addressed by either their boss, senior, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the ethics department mm -hmm. saying, you need to divorce oh, yeah. your spouse oh, yeah. because – they are out ethics particle and they're holding you back, back right. and that they are making uh, it impossible for you to advance in mm -hmm. your career. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, this is a, a real thing that actually happens. It's not just, you know, theoretical. It well, actually it, happens. Mike, when you see the letters, like for example, Mark and Claire, uh, uh, their mom, their dad, right. Wrote, how dare you try to see us and have a relationship, force us to have a relationship with your kids, <laughs> our grandkids, your ex-wife, when you said you were leaving and you were tired of the abuse, she literally wrote, fuck off. I'm staying here and I'll, what did she say? Inform the kids? Yeah, I'll, I'll inform the kids. That was it. <laughs> There's no emotion connected to it. It's like, you know, see you later. I was, I, I don't think that there was anything else that need be said about this. Yeah. Again, Scientology has, has honed the, this idea of withholding affection yeah. to, to a, an absolute fine art of and that's control. What I to say. That's what I want to say. For people who are just getting in, Scientology, right? They do a successor communications course. They do a purification rundown uh, and they get onto the ups and downs in life course. Now that's where they start to separate you from your family and your loved ones mm -hmm. who are not in Scientology. That's where it starts. That's where they start saying, like you just said, Mike, they don't have your best interests at heart, right? And, you know, in California, it's really about you know, actors and singers and artists, right? So they push that button, right? Like you're not going to be successful, and you know, because your mother is telling you you should have finished college as opposed to following your dreams, right? So they start to put the wedge between you and uh, your mom, right? By saying, we have your best interests at heart. And so you should stop communicating to your mom, right? Yep. And the mother's usually saying, and what is this thing you're doing now with Scientology? I'm not happy. I, like, I've heard, you know, I know what this is, right? And so they immediately say, you need to cut that person out of your life. But they don't say it because it's Scientology until later. They say it's because of your career or your personal happiness. And you know what I mean? And if a person has, you know, regular gripes with their family members, like, oh, my brother or my sister busts my balls about blah, blah, blah. They'll say, mm, that's not good. You know, that's suppressing you. That's holding you down. And anybody who holds you down, right? Like, um, what's her name? The Cardone sell this concept, right? Yes. Pretending it's not Scientology. Talking about people holding you down. People, you know, and everybody who listens to something like that immediately is looking for the reason for their unhappiness. The reason for they're not being successful and then right. they will make that true right like if you Absolutely, believe Leah. that somebody is suppressing you and you if you believe that and then you remove that person all of a sudden you'll see some only because you believe it to be true as opposed to that person might be a shitty person they might say and do fucked up things to me but and also I'm not happy, right? Like it could be all things, but the way they, the way Scientology works is like you're saying, they pinpoint something and they make it black and white. Yeah. And that's very easy for people to say, good, I have a solution. So it's that, it's my mom, it's my dad, it's my husband, it's my daughter. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right, Leah. That's a, a very, very 
uh, important point to make as, as to how these ideas get planted. Into they, yeah. they, and then they become like, oh, this this really is a good one. And it's right. very hard to get rid of those. Right. And if you get a good therapist or you read the right books or you research the right information, because we all search out information that we already know, right? We don't right. look for information that opposes the way we already think. We literally search out what we want to be told, what we <laughs> already believe. But if you're searching for the answer, you have to search for answers that you don't already know or want to be true, right? Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Okay, Leah, point four, mm -hmm. threats. Mm. Oh, my God, again. Yeah. It's yeah. like you say the word and you go, yep, that's that's yep. Scientology, threats. Yep. yep. The, th the threat that will declare you, the threat yep. that, that we will disconnect you from your family, the threat that you're going to be a black cinder floating in space for all eternity. Or the even that, that you won't have the answer, right? That we have the answers and we have them for you and, you know, the threat that you won't make it in the world without Scientology. Yes. Yeah. And and also the threat that if you if you do and say things we don't like, we are going to make your life hell. The these threats, there are like so many threats in Scientology mm -hmm. of the horrible things that are going to happen to you mm -hmm. and that we will do to you. Mm -hmm. And that will um, eventuate should you cross us in any way or mm -hmm. fail to live up to what we are demanding that you do mm -hmm. it is, again, Scientology is like the the poster, poster for this subject. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, but, you know, and it's constant. It's an everyday subtle threat. Like if you do not finish your course in the time that it says on the check sheet that you paying that you're paying for the course you're paying for has to be done in two and a half weeks or has to be done in six weeks. I mean, you have them badgering you. When are you coming in? You have to finish this course by a certain time. And if you don't, you're going to be, you know, sent to the, the student you know, reprimand place where they're going to make sure you re understand every word that you read that, you know, took four weeks to read. They're going to go through the whole thing mm -hmm. and see what you missed, what you did wrong, what you didn't understand. If you don't pay for the next service, the day, the hour, the minute, you have to re-sign in Scientology when you finish um, a service in Scientology they send you to the sales department. And if you go, I'm good, I'm going to wait a week up. Oh, you, you're going to send to another department for reprimand. They're going to interrogate. You. There's always a punishment for not continue. You have to buy your next service the, the day you, the, the minute you finish your prior service. It's con constant interrogations. If you ask questions at your expense, your family gets punished for you asking questions or for going on the internet or watching going clear or watching the aftermath. I mean, it's, it's all day, all night. You can't right. have a fight at work with somebody with a coworker if they're not Scientologists and not gets in trouble for that in your church. You can't piss off Tom Cruise or any Scientology celebrity without being punished by your church. You can't, even have a business dispute Church. with people, right? You can't have business disputes with Scientologists because they'll go, if you're unhappy with them, they're like, that. Ah, you must have done something. You can't even have a normal, like, no, I paid for a service and you didn't give it to me. It's now a church problem. Like yes. every, your whole life, your, your marriage is handled by Scientology. Your children are handled. Your children are punished by Scientology. You're punished by Scientology any relationship you have it's all punishable everything you do yep and and uh it's even worse than the sea org obviously oh, because yeah. the threat there is you'll be assigned to the rpf the you know uh concentration camp rehabilitation force yeah uh 
you will be forced to stay up all night. Yeah. You'll be taken off your food and put on <laughs> rice and beans. Mm -hmm. I mean, the threats that exist in the Sea Org, you'll and, be, and you, you will you not guys be allowed. Were beaten, Mike. I mean, physically, mentally, yeah. spiritually beaten down. Yes. So I, um, I put it to you, uh, Dr. Goldsmith, that if you would like to do a study of emotional terrorism, <laughs> you mm. should do a study of Scientology. Yeah. Because the points that you raised, these four points, are so well um, defined and documented mm. in the mm. world of Scientology that it, it would be like the case study to end all case studies yeah. of an organization that engages in emotional terrorism. Right. And like I said, I wrote a, a blog article about this earlier, and Stephanie wrote, Stephanie Hutchison wrote one um, that I'm going to put. But I also want to commend or recommend people read a book that I have been recommending since 2009 when I first read it, called The Sociopath Next Door by Martha mm. Stout, where a lot of these characteristics are characteristics that you find, like psych psychopaths and sociopaths and you know malignant narcissists mm -hmm. are emotional terrorists. Yeah. The, all the, those people are engaged in these sort of activities and are the classic emotional terrorists. And this and is And this is what Scientology parents, by the way, are doing to their own children. Yes. Yeah. Th this is what's so bad about this yeah. subject and why I really felt we needed to talk mm -hmm. about it a bit here, Leah, is because the very subject of Scientology immerses people in this world of emotional terrorism yeah it affects them and it teaches them to yes it impacts on them mm -hmm. in negative bad ways but it also grows and raises and and learns emotional terrorists mm -hmm. you know he yes. talks about this is learned activity yes this, this emotional terrorism is taught by scientology Mm -hmm. It is yeah. part of parcel of what Scientology actually is and yeah. what it really does teach you. Mm -hmm. it, 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 because I know also, my, no, you're absolutely right. Because also, we're forgetting about you know how Scientology parents teach their children how to do the training routines. You know the communication course that it breaks down communication in different parts. Uh, supposedly, but it, what it's doing is, is this, right? It's teaching your children to go against what, what they innately have, like a self-protecting mechanism. It breaks that down and it teaches them, teaches them, okay, not to have emotion. It teaches them to be abused. It teaches them to be abusers. And so you know, that their p children are punished through conditions, like they are constantly having to make amends. Um, they're, they're called up statistic, they're called down statistic. And if a child is down statistic, their parents are applying Scientology technology to them, making them make up the damage to them because they didn't have their statistics up. It's, you know, at Scientology, you know, it's, it's goes on and on and on. And you're right, Mike, it's, it's taught and it's um, this per, yeah. Any, anyway, I, you already said it. It really is uh, an important topic to discuss because I think, I think a lot of Scientologists, too, people who leave, don't really get how hurt they were. Um, yes. How, yes. Yes, and they're like, Leah. well, I'm out, you know, they're, and they do the Scientology thing. Like, you know, I'm responsible for the condition that I'm in. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. You, you you're, you're, help. you're so spot on about mm -hmm. that. And that was why I thought this was important for yeah. us to talk about. And I know that, that we're just sort of um, pontificating mm -hmm. about this stuff, but 
it's an, a really important subject and I don't think it gets enough attention. There's like, we all, you know, I, and me more so than you, but I'm always talking about, ah, well, you know, they're off doing this and they've got their ideal logs and they're this yeah. and they're that and blah, blah. But there is some fundamental evilness that is inherent in the world of Scientology yeah. that doesn't get spoken about enough or yeah. explained yeah. to people, even yeah. to ex-Scientologists, the point you just made. Yeah. They don't they don't look at this and go, oh yeah. They they might have seen that article and just sort of brushed on buying it. Yeah, it doesn't affect me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. affect me. Yeah. Uh it it has. Yeah. It has. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And that's why I always say, like, get the right therapist, seek out information that you don't think you know, right? And <laughs> and uh, go beyond what you think you know about yourself, um, because I think we all deserve the help, whether it's from Scientology or another abusive uh, cult or frame of mind or toxic relationship, you know, it's you deserve the help and it, it's just, we can't, we can't all get there, right? Like some people can just not experience trauma um, that affects them uh, long-term, but some of us do. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, that you were, you know, you violently, you know, had a crime committed against you. Trauma comes in very different forms. And so, you know, I've been a proponent for getting real help, um, for a long time and you know it's never like oh i'm good right it's kind of like you have good days you have bad days yep right and we're never going to be perfect people but we do deserve the help uh to recover from what's been done to us and that's a concept that scientologists have a hard time accepting that you were a victim of something that it happened to you you didn't cause your own abuse yes Yes, yes, Leah. And just uh, on that note, um, we have been uh, working really hard in the Aftermath Foundation to put together um, a team of counselors, therapists, yeah. psychologists to provide this sort of help to people if they need it. So, And Mike, I think that's amazing. And a, a great point that you brought up, a big point, uh, uh, deciding factor of why I wanted to go back to school uh, because I realized there's not a lot of therapists out there, psychologists who are well-versed in the world of Scientology. And it's just what I was talking about, right? A lot of them think, you know, I have the same think about lawyers, right? In general, they think they know everything, you know, so they don't ask questions, you know, same with doc, you know what I mean? They think they know yeah, everything yeah. there is to know. Um, and and the world of Scientology is not like any other cult. It's very different. It has its own language. It has it, its own everything, and it's everything has another meaning. So if 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 you know a Scientologist is saying this, the truth is you know beneath that. And you know the same with our personalities, right? We created alternate personalities because we have to be one way in the public, right? We have to remember the lies that we have to tell. And so you become a person who just is a liar, perpetual right. chronic pathological liar, because we're not allowed to tell the truth about what's happening in Scientology and in our own lives and what's happening at gold base and what's happening at CST. You know what I mean? So, so with that, you have a completely different, separate person that you had that you had to create right as yeah. a Scientologist and a lot of therapists don't understand that they don't understand the conditioning started very early that it's very hard to kind of take away what you believe to what you have been taught uh, because I know people still you probably still do this if you're a Scientologist like Scientologist if you hit you know you, you, you stub your foot or, you know, something bad happens to you. Your first thought is what did I do to deserve that bad thing happening to me? Yep. And that's conditioning of Scientology, right? Or that you don't deserve to be happy is a Scientology concept, right? That, 
you know, family and all this kind of thing is not valued, right? Vacations and education and all that stuff. You have to learn to, to say these things to a therapist, right? Yes. Um, because you got, first you have to know that what happened to you, but you <laughs> don't realize what happened to you until you talk to a therapist. Um, and I'm lucky that, you know, I've only been through three and I, I settled on an amazing one and, it, you know, but there's not many out there. Right. They think they know what they're talking about. And then you and I both found out very quickly. <laughs> they don't. Because yes. the advice that they give, it doesn't work for a Scientologist. It doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and they're kind of stumped when you're like, no, you, you can't do that with a Scientologist. No, you can't do that with a Scientologist. No, no, they don't read. They don't know. They don't go on the internet. No, 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 no. So anyway, my long-winded answer to say that why I want to get an education and, and I'm in the field of psychology mainly is because I want to be able to really help people, um, in this field that I just don't have the tools, right? Like I have the mouth, right? I have the want, I have the heart, but I don't have the, like, this is what happened to you. You know, I know Leah, but you know, yeah. the mouth and the heart goes a long way. Yes. I don't disagree. Uh, Thank you. I, but uh, you know, I do, <laughs> I, I, I think we need more psychologists in the field that are well-versed in Scientology. I, because, I, could yeah. not agree with you more. Yeah. And like I said, it's showing. Yeah, thank you. It is. Like the conversations that I have had with you over many years now, mm -hmm. your um, perspective on things and how you couch them and the way that you you explain things is different now. That's it good. it just thank is. You. It's thank like you. it's working. Thank your you. learning is is learning you shit. Yeah. And I don't have to look up every word. I don't understand. Matter of fact, one of my professors says, why does it take you so long? This should take uh, you 45 minutes. Something took me four hours. And I, you know, I said, professor, I, you know, I started at this time and ended on this time. He's like, why? <laughs> and I said, well, because I didn't under, like, I had to like, you know, really like understand certain concepts. He's like, no, you don't, not for this part. You don't like just just get it for right now. You're going to, we're going to go over it later. That's the purpose <laughs> of the course. And I was like, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. You're so precious. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm sort of sorry that this has been a kind of melancholy. Um, I don't think so, Mike. I think it's educational and it's it is educational for Leah. us too. Like, you know, yeah. Even us talking about it, I start to kind of unravel things in my own life, in my own head, you know? I know. And, you know, it, it's know. helpful. It's helpful on all levels. So Okay, well, it, yeah. it's helpful. Uh, it's But usually we have a little more laugh and, that's and okay. fun. But that's we, okay. Yeah. That's okay for this one. Yeah. Um, we'll be back. Um, who knows with what's next? Uh, we'll think of something, come up with something, and see you all again soon. Thank you all Hopefully for watching. And uh, bye for now. Bye for now.